Hey guys, it's Troy. Let's talk about custom made fountain pens. Now, I enjoy seeing small businesses that succeed. When they get a good reputation, they tend to get very popular. And this is the third custom made fountain pen that I've ordered from a small business. I've got one, by the way, that's uh, from a custom maker that's so backlogged it's going to take a year to get it so I st I'm still waiting for this pen uh, to even be manufactured so I still got months uh, left and I placed that order last year but there's another uh, manufacturer um, small timer that I have ordered from and I've already presented that pen here on this channel and I ordered a third and I have that particular pen. I've had it for a little bit now and I've been using it and enjoying it and I thought I'd share it with you. Jim Hines is a small um, business, a small time pen manufacturer who fortunately is growing somewhat. Jim is out of Anna, Texas and um, you may have seen his work on somebody else's YouTube channel which is where I found out about it. So uh, Larry the pen bug guy turned me on to Jim and he's put out several videos about Jim's operation and some of his pens and he's had giveaways well Jim was running a sale uh, and I went ahead and ordered one and I'm gonna share that here with you uh, number one I decided to do it because I really liked the looks of this particular pen he's got some good-looking pens that he does his own self but this particular pen is one that struck my fancy. There were about two of them that I saw on the pictures that were being presented as offerings from Jim Hines and I said I think that's my favorite right right there. So the Beacon is the model that I had ordered. A um, couple of things when you order from a custom pen manufacturer there's a couple things you can expect. Number one you should expect um, a little bit of personal interaction and personal service and with Jim being basically a one-man band um, then he has to handle all the aspects of everything that goes on with his business. And so you'll have personal interaction. Number two, um, all dates are relative. So if he gets really busy, he's got a lot of other work going on, then your uh, pen construction is going to have to wait a little bit. And I waited uh, and uh, patiently and let Jim do his thing. So... I've learned having worked with other custom small-time manufacturers that um, when you're given a date uh, to expect your new creation you have to be patient because it may not be exactly when you think it's going to be not a problem I expect that and I know that from having done it previously that's why I wasn't too worried when uh, when my pen didn't come but maybe close to a month after when I expected it to be so not a big deal. I have no problem waiting for decent quality. So, um, I wanted to share this with you. The pen shows up in you know, a plain cardboard sleeve like this, but when you take it out, you've got a, a metal box, and there is Jim's business right there. It looks to be laser engraved into the metal box. Hey, pretty cool, you know? You don't expect that from a, a one-guy operation. Uh, he also includes uh, a sticker, and he gave me a couple of his business cards to throw in there. Perhaps that you can uh, you can see that there. So I'll put up Jim's website here for you, so you can go check. Uh, basically, HeinzPens.com. And when you open this thing up, this was the beauty that I was waiting on right there. Purple is my favorite color, and a gold and purple together just looks stunning. One of the things about Jim Hines is that um, he does his own acrylic pours. So he hand poured this acrylic and then you know, drilled it out and created the pen. This is a good size pen, which is one of the things I really like about it. I do like bigger, beefier pens. I don't mind smaller ones and skinnier ones, but this has a decent amount of girth to it and it has a de decent amount of length to it. So I like that personally. Now, you can see, look at the swirl in that. No two pens are going to be identical because of the way they're made with their hand poured and swirled in the acrylic. So you can see that this one has a lot of gold uh, to it. Probably just a little more gold on the cap than, than I 
personally would have made, but it actually adds to the uniqueness of this particular pen. So uh, here in the barrel, you can see it tapers down just a little bit, and then you've got a, a flat on the bottom. The finial here at the top uh, is, n is the same material, and it's curved um, a little bit here, kind of a dome shape. And the clip, and that's the thing, um, I had actually um, uh, hadn't ordered it with a clip because, you know, it was a $40 upgrade. And uh, in, talking, in talking to Jim, he had offered uh, me um, to go ahead and put a clip on it for me. And I'm glad he did, because one of the things I like about clips um, is if you, you set down a pen like this, it's going to keep rolling on the desk. And I do like the idea of a roll stop uh, for, uh, for a pen. So, and you can see actually there's a little bit of a gap on that cap there, the, the, the caps, uh, I guess the capstone, I don't know what you want to call it there on that clip. So, but, but look at that. I, I mean, uh, to me, every time I pick up this pen, it's absolutely stunning. And I love this color combination. So, it is a screw, uh, screw cap. And it was like, uh, I think it was like two and a half full turns something like that in order to, to uh, get off that cap. So, uh, fully acrylic cap. And you can see, um, here is the nib. I'm going to put up some nice pictures of this stuff. I'll give you some close-ups. You know, the, here's the section. It's good and long. You know, you've got this, the, the screw threads here, which are not sharp at all. You've got a good sharp step down here. But here's the thing this section is so long you're never really going to notice that when you're holding the pen at all I mean you can feel the texture or your at the edge of your fingers but you're never going to be gripping on onto that that little sharp step down right there and then you've got the little bit of flare out here and then you've got um, of course your nib and I'll tell you a little bit more about that here in just a little while so let's unscrew this Jim includes an, uh, a, a standard international converter, and in, uh, I'm trying to remember if he included a cartridge with it or not, but um, here is what you will see. Now, I put in some uh, a purple ink to go along with it. Jim actually included um, an ink sample, and it's one I hadn't used before, but I already had two different inks picked out. This is the second fill of ink. All right, So the first I put in was a Birmingham Pens Andy Warhol Pop Art purple uh, and I went ahead and emptied that sucker out and this fill that I have in here right now is actually this so it's an Arosha Zuku uh, Murasaki Shikibu and I'll show you what that ink looks like here shortly so like I said this is my second fill um, full fill of ink see how long that pen is see how long that sticks out in the back of the hand you definitely do not need on a beacon uh, to have to have this pen posted in order to hold it. As a matter of fact, though the pen posts and it posts very nicely, look how, I mean, it's like you're holding a ruler. <laughs> it sticks out um, almost uh, uh, strangely, bizarrely, and freakishly long. But uh, so th although it can be posted, there's really no need to. And that, uh, that cap does back weight that pen somewhat. So I am very happy being able to just take off the, that cap and write with this pen as it is. Like I said, this to me is what I really enjoy for a pen. I like this length of pen. I like the, the little bigger around. I like them a little bit longer. And I thoroughly enjoy uh, the balance of this one, the weight of it. It's not overly heavy. It's acrylic. It's not metal. So it's going to be a little lighter weight than if it was metal. And uh, I'm just uh, happy with my purchase. I'm going to show you how it writes. I'm going to give you um, some of uh, the measurements of this particular pen. And I'll give you the weight of the pen. I'll give you some, uh, if I haven't already, some close-up shots perhaps of the, the nib and the acrylic material. And let's see how it writes. Gorgeous piece of, uh, of work for the Jim Hines Beacon.
All right, here we go with a writing sample and the uh, size comparison portion of uh, the video. And here it is. I like how it, I, I set up this light just so it could show off those colors and that sparkle that's on this particular pen. Tell my cat's been up here. So here with my trusty Rhodia dot pad, laying out this particular pen, the Jim Hines Beacon. Now I wanted to compare to some other pens that are within its size class. So let's go with the um, a Conklin All American. And that's a good size pen as it is. Let's go with the Mont Blanc 149. <laughs> oh, it's an inside joke. Um, Delta Dolce Vita. Give you an idea of uh, size comparison there. And just uh, for those of you who are all too familiar with the Pilot Metropolitan uh, and see how small that is by comparison. I mean, look at the difference right here. So that's a good size comparison, I think. I mean, it's a good size chunky pen, and I like it. Um, like I said, the ink that I chose to put in this for this particular fill-up was the Pilot uh, Arosha Zuku Murasaki Shikibu. You know, it sounds like um, my family doctor from back home. So, absolutely gorgeous. Now, I told you earlier that I was going to tell you more about the nib. One of the things that Jim has done, and I'll see if I can get a good picture of it here. If not, I've got a uh, microscope camera that I'll be using here and probably show you a good picture. Um, if you remember when I showed you the business card, see his logo right there? And how about even on the, the pen case? Well, this logo he had put and customized onto his nib. So I can't remember if it was supposed to be a Bach or a Yovo nib uh, or, or what brand, um, but he had it custom made, so this, um, this duotone nib with his own logo put onto the nib. So for a small time operator, Jim, that's pretty classy. I like the way you did that. You had a lot of stuff customized. Um, and personally, I am very attached to the idea of a very boring, very smooth well writing medium nib and that's exactly what I asked for so here we go uh, Jim Hines custom made and this uh, particular pen like I said there you go right there is the beacon with a medium nib. Now, this particular pen, it does. It writes smooth. That's one of the things that Jim said that he would be doing uh, in his communications with me is that he was spending some time to make sure that nib was good and smooth. And indeed, it is. So, um, smooth. Get a little bit of springy, uh, you know. Uh, a little bit of spring to that nib. And I expected nothing more than an ordinary steel nib, but you got a good little spring coming out of that particular nib. And let's turn it over. For reverse writing, very scratchy and uh, ultra fine line. Pens weren't made to write that way, so, but some people like to see that anyway. So uh, you got just a little bit of feedback when you write, not a tremendous amount. Personally, you know, I'm not one that has to have a lot of feedback. Why? Because I look at the paper when I'm writing. But, you know, you definitely, you know, it's not toothy. You don't really feel that you've got a tremendous amount of uh, uh, dig into the paper whatsoever. And it's fairly smooth. And it's nice. It lays down a good amount of ink. A little smear test there. So anyway, um, you know, if you're going to order a custom pen, you know, find somebody who does a decent job, and I do recommend Jim. I've tried several others. Uh, some I'll be reviewing up and coming. Some people have their pens overpriced. Uh, there are a couple of uh, independent pen turning, uh, turning companies or companies that are morphing into 
doing more pen turning when they've traditionally been just a, a store. And though I'm all for them jumping in the water because I, I welcome, absolutely welcome new players into the market and choices for consumers, um, there are some folks I think are overcharging uh, when they're just getting into this. Uh, Jim seems to be fairly well experienced. He's developing a good reputation. Uh, and he's even coming out with his own uh, his own pores, his own acrylics. Whereas I've seen uh, some of these same manufacturers, I've seen the same acrylics that they're using offered by other manufacturers. So they're obviously buying the bar stock and uh, and just using it and instead of making all their own. Now, if you're gonna if you're gonna buy bar stock and if you're not a well established um, manufacturer then you probably ought not be charging more than someone like Jim does. So that tells me one of two things. Either Jim is undercharging on some of his pens or actually nicely charging uh, for them right competitively on some of his more expensive uh, pens. This one here was not one of his most expensive at all. I mean, I was very impressed uh, with the price that he had on this particular pen. It was on sale, so I got it... Um, you know, at a at a discount compared to what he would normally be selling it as, but you know, Jim does a great job at a reasonable price. puts a lot of hard work and effort into his individually crafted, uh, handcrafted pens, um, and I've been using this one a lot. Number one, I I like looking at it. I like showing it off. <laughs> I like people ooing and eyeing over uh, this particular creation because it's just gorgeous. I just absolutely love the sparkle, I like the swirl, I like the color combination, very eye-catching, very pleasant to write with, very pleasant to hold, it's big enough to certainly garner attention. So if you're looking for a, a decent handcrafted custom pen, and Jim can probably do just about anything you want with it um, to add some changes and make it yours uh, very tailored to your specific tastes. Give him a holler. Get a hold of him at uh, at his website. Again, I'll put that up on the screen for you. So, the Jim Hines Custom Made Beacon Fountain Pen. Very pleasant. Uh, it's a it's a good buy. I'm glad I got this particular baby.